it's Allie with Seattle Puppy Gear, and today we are doing a crew comparison. We have the Ranchilio Silvia Pro and then the Breville Dual Boiler here. So there are a lot of things that these machines have in common, yet they go about them in a different way. So there is a lot of, lot of things specifically. So if you're looking at them for all of their features, I'd recommend checking out the crew reviews for each, but we'll kind of go over um, what we can and like the biggest differences in those and what they share. So why don't I start with the Ranchilio? So overall, you can kind of see it's a simple interface and this really does borrow a lot of its features or like general features from the Sylvia, but that version is your single boiler and this one adds in another boiler, so dual boiler. So on the Ranchilio, we have three buttons on the front. We have power buttons, so that's pretty simple, just on, off. You have a steam button. So this is something that's unique to this machine. Automatically, when the machine turns on, it's not going to start that steam boiler for you. It's reheating there. Kind of gives you an idea for the sound too, for when it heats up. So if you want to activate that steam, if you're going to use that steam, you just have to hit this button here. And if you notice when I hit that, this light turned off, that means the steam boiler is off. We hit it again, it's blinking at first to show you that it's heating up. When it's ready to go, it'll just stay illuminated. And last but not least, we have our hot water. Oh, we will talk about this one too. We have our hot water button here, so that will initiate. Funny little trick about this though, if it's still heating, that hot water won't work. So you just have to wait for it to be heated up and ready to go. Have your little hot water spout. So that's great for rinsing your shot glasses and things like that. The steam boiler on this isn't huge. It's going to be better for the steam power than so, uh, so much for the hot water. I only recommend using the hot water for shot glass rinsing and stuff like that. Um, it'll be hard to make like a full Americano using it. I think the machine uh, might just take a little bit longer to reheat and everything after that's done. So the benefit to a dual boiler, you do get more temperature consistency from shot to shot, and that's gonna help that flavor stay the same. Anytime you have a fluctuation in the temperature, it's going to make a difference in the output and the flavor. So with this, this is the brew button that I was telling you about. Um, up at the top, we have our little display. It's actually showing the temperature right here. And then we have our brew button. So this is how you initiate the brew. And then you can stop it. it gives you a little count of how many seconds your uh, shot was pulling. Um, and then it goes back to the temperature. In this deeper menu, there's a, uh, a couple different features that they add on. One of those being it has a auto off, so like a sleep function. So after a period of an hour of non-use, and then you can change it up to two hours, that will shut off. And all you have to do, you'll see there's a little dot here showing you that it's in the sleep mode. And then all you have to do is like hit a button like the brew button or something like that, and it'll wake back up. It also has a, um, not necessarily an auto on, which is what we usually call these like machines that will turn on for you. It's more like a delayed start. So you actually can set how many hours you want it to wake up. So in eight hours, you want it to wake up. In six hours, you want it to wake up, that sort of thing. But it also has to be set every time you use it. So something to think about whenever you're choosing between the machines, it's a little bit unique of a design in that way. So um, I think in the crew review, John talks about how, how that's best used. So check that out if you're interested. We've got our steam power here, which is still pretty powerful steam. You can see all the steam that came out there. That's pretty good. Um, something else about this one, it actually has a unique design in that this drip tray here can raise or lower. Now, you really probably wouldn't utilize that function too often unless you only pulled into like small glasses or something like that and just like to have it higher. I have it on the second setting right here, but overall I think it's a three inch cup clearance that you have there. So yeah. Small drip tray, just like the other Sylvia, that's been kind of a, a Ranchilio design option. So you can still pull it out, but you see how it's real thin. It's bigger and wider than the one on the Sylvia, but it's still pretty thin. So you just have to be careful about emptying that out pretty regularly. So yeah, 
what else can I say about it? I think that's pretty much it for the overall general features. Um, it's pretty long, which is a little bit longer than most classic semi-automatic machines. So they, they utilize that saying it's better for countertops, you know, if it's uh, longer instead of wider, it'll take up a little bit less space that way overall. But yeah, that's the Sylvia, the Sylvia Pro. Let's move on to the Breville Dual Boiler. So this machine, um, when we, let, let's start over. Let's, when we talk about the Rancilio, that's more of a traditional design. That's how machines have been designed for a long time. Um, it's a pretty reliable design. And so if you're used to the way that works, um, it will make a lot of sense for you. If it's a new machine for you and it's kind of a new venture, it will take a little time getting used to the machine just to learn all the different little settings. They're not as straightforward as something like the Breville. So this machine kind of took those same features and redesigned them. Um, and this is gonna make it more like an appliance in the fact that it's pretty easy to use. It's got a better little interface and tells you exactly what it's doing rather than like some symbols that the Ranchilio will use in the menu. So you wouldn't necessarily have to have like the menu options out um, like you would for the Ranchilio, but I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so you can see there's a little LED screen here. So right now it's displaying the temperature of that brew boiler, which you can change. So we're gonna go into the menu. You see you have the ability to change the shots amounts, so like the time itself. So if we were gonna change the one cup, you see it's illuminated, so you can just change that there. Or if you're gonna go to two cup, change that over, illuminated there. Shot temperature, this is where you can change the temperature of that coffee boiler if you wish. Um, this is the auto stop, I'm sorry, auto on. So when you turn that on, you can set, oops, sorry. You can set the temperature, <laughs> sorry, you can set the time um, here. So right now I had it set to 7 a.m. Um, and then we are going to go over, this is the cleaning cycle and this is just where you set the clock up for the day. So yeah, pretty simple there. Uh, there is a deeper menu inside if you were to turn off the machine hold this button and then turn it on. Cool, so in this sub menu here, like that's your Descala program. Um, you have a few different things here. I wanted to show the, oh yeah. So this one also has a sleep function like the Ranchilio does. So you can turn that off. It will go to sleep after about an hour, I believe. One of the things I noticed that was pretty cool and I actually didn't know that until I played in the menu is that you can switch these buttons here. Right now they're set up for a time shot. So for each of these, it's gonna have, you see you have two different options for the dose, um, sorry, for the like output. So you have a single shot and a double shot. Uh, standard, when this opens up out of the box, your double shot will pull for 30 seconds. But in that deeper menu, you have the option, you can change it to have the same volume from shot to shot. So volumetrics are what some, mach some commercial machines use as well. So instead of going based off the time, it'll go based off the volume or the output that you want. So that's a good way to have a little bit better consistency rather than the time. Um, just so you basically can see how your grind size and all of that is affecting the actual output. You do also have a manual on this one. So that's an added uh, benefit. So you can you know choose whichever you like. It's only gonna be manual on this machine. Uh, no like program, shot, time or anything. It's all gonna be manual. You just have to start and stop. Another feature that Breville has is going to be a pre-infusion, which is really a big draw to this machine. There's not a lot of, um, especially in this price point, because this is a really good price point for dual boilers. They usually go up a lot after this. So there's not too many machines that will give you this style of pre-infusion until you go up higher. So I wanted to show you what I meant by that. The manual button is going to do it for the longest amount of time. You can literally hold it and like have infinite amount of pre-infusion if you wanted to do it that way. And I'll kind of show you what I mean here. I'm gonna hold down the button and then when I release it, that's gonna put the full bar pressure into it and you'll hear what I mean. So here we go, pre-infusion, just a little bit of water dispersed there and then let it go. That pump kicked on and then just hit it when you want it to turn off. You can also program that pre-infusion and the shot time by just changing it in the sub-menu here. So what you'll do, uh, sorry, missed it on the menu. So you see one cup, two cup, 
So now you have it programmed or set up to be programmed. So if you're doing time, you don't have to use the coffee. You don't have to like pull an actual shot while you're programming it. If you're using the volume, you'd want to pull an actual shot um, just because it needs to create that amount. It won't be able to create that amount just by, you know, brewing straight water. Anyway, let's get out of here. Both of these machines will come with a tamp. Breville always has this little design. It's like a little aluminum and plastic tamper, but the benefit is it has a magnet at the top. So locks into place there. You don't have to worry about losing it or, you know, um, not being able to find it like sometimes you can do with things on your countertop. The Ranchulia will come with this nice, a little bit heavier, a little bit more durable of a tamper or just like a little bit nicer of a tamper. It's a black painted wood um, with this nice steel bottom. So overall, the tamper probably isn't going to make too much of a difference in your deciding factor, but just something to note about the differences between the two. They both have insulated steam arms, so that's going to help um, milk not burn onto the arm right away. So you have a little bit more time to grab your rag, wipe it off, um, and won't have to worry about that milk staying on as much. Makes it easier to clean. You can see they both have a little um, holder here for you to uh, utilize so you don't have to worry about touching that seam arm. That's going to help you out. What else can I say? The Breville here, another thing it has, it has an easy fill boiler at the front or easy fill, sorry, easy fill tank. You have the option to fill it up here. You just pour straight in, which is nice, especially if you're trying not to get back in the back or you have lower countertops. You can also, there's a larger water tank in the back or it's the same water tank. It's a larger surface area. So if you wanted to pull it out, if you're doing some cleaning, stuff like that, it has this fun feature where it's locked right now. So you won't be able to move it on your countertop. And some machines like say this one, for example, you'd have to pull it physically instead of having this feature. So what they do is they add an option to pop it up on wheels. So you can move it around easier get to the back right there to access the water tank and then lock it back. Now it won't move. They have a little accessory kit in the back. It'll come with four different types of basket. The Ranchilio will come with two. The Ranchilio comes with an eight gram. Yes, an eight gram basket and then a 16 gram basket. So it's a little bit smaller than the standard size. It's actually more of a um, uh, Italian style, which goes along with the machine and the design of the machine. Breville's will come with a little bit more modern baskets, which will be like single shot is about a 10 gram. And then we have, oh, I have the double shot basket in here. It's about 18 to 19 maybe. And then you have two, two dual walled or pressurized baskets in here as well. That's not something that's gonna come with the Ranchilio, something that's gonna come here. So this might be good if you have some pre-ground coffee or something like that, like a decaf that you don't use too often. So you'd be able to swap these out and use that. But yeah, it all stores pretty nicely in this, ooh, let me separate those out, in that compartment. This has a much bigger drip tray here. And it also has this fun feature where it will pop up and give you a reminder when to empty it, which would be something that's probably gonna be a little bit harder to do on that Rentilio. So this one kind of adds that to let you know. Both have all stainless casing, um, a little bit more plastic, of course, on that Breville. You do get the pressure gauge too. That's something to note. Pressure gauge so you can monitor what's happening in your group a little bit more effectively. Yeah. Oh, um, it will also remind you about cleaning. That's something you'll want to remember to do on the Rinchilio. So overall, you can see these machines kind of have um, some bigger differences in the way that the machine actually produces the function or the way that it works, but they have um, the ability to do the same thing. So I hope that sounded right. Yeah, so anyway, I have the Minion Note grinder here that I'm going to be using to make a drink. Um, we are using Anchorhead's Winter Warmer. Right here, it's a seasonal holiday blend, if you will. Um, the notes aren't very specific. It's Elf Tears, North Pole Snow, and Gumdrops. So I will let you know how it actually comes out in my shot. Yeah, let's brew. Let's start on the Ranchilio. 
So even though this one may seem a little bit more intimidating to use at first, it definitely has that traditional vibe and it's going to have some uh, more durable parts inside overall. Let's see. Um, one way our product manager described it was to say that it's more like a commercial, a classic commercial style of machine. So it's gonna work more like some commercial models. My Akaya Pearl S here, if I can get it to tear properly. It's sensitive to air, so you have to be careful. Here we go. So with the note, it's just gonna be manual, so I'm gonna fold it. And something too, when I talked about the baskets here, really the max I was able to do was 16 with a couple different coffees that I tried. If you want to do bigger shots, just pick up an 18 gram basket. We have them on the website, just throw one in. They're not too expensive. So this is at 15.9, which I will take for a 16 gram shot. Perfect. I just like to make sure there's no leftover coffee, which is why I do that. You don't really need to purge a dual boiler because it's at that right temperature. All right, I've got my milk pitcher here. This is from Fellow. Um, my steam boiler is ready to go. Probably should put this over the hole. Have to get used to that. Have to kind of work around, see what's the best position for it and everything. It is, it does have a nice range, so that's a good thing. Oh, I should probably pull my shot, huh? Here we go. Right at 25 seconds, that's what I did last time. So time can be a good indicator of the volume, but not always. Volume metrics are gonna be a little bit more precise. Time is easier to do though, if you didn't wanna use a scale, or I'd still recommend using a scale, but. Did a little extra foam there, got excited. Sometimes if you toss it around in the pitcher like this. It will help incorporate and make it less foamy at the top. Another trick, you can just put a little blob out. So like for latte art, sometimes people will do that to get the first initial blob of foam out of the cup. All right. Let's see. Sort of, sort of. Little tiny heart rosetta. All right, I'm gonna taste it. Just a little sip though. Has a nice little thin layer of foam, so that actually wasn't too bad. Oh, that's super good. I really like this coffee. It's earthy, but it's not like overwhelming. It's got a nice roast level to it, so I like the way it pairs in like this little small cortado, for instance. Um, still holds up, not gonna be overwhelmed by the milk. Really good. All right. Just do a quick little clean up here. Ooh, that is hot. Be sure to hold that. And let's try out the dual boiler now. So this one does have a bigger basket. So when I dosed 16 there, if I did the same dose with this one, it wouldn't quite work out so good because it has a bigger basket. So if you dose the same amount in a bigger basket, it's gonna pull differently. That's just the nature of the beast. It's gonna you know, have a different shape in the portafilter itself. The basket in the Ranchilio are a little uh, um, angled where these are straight side. So. see where that's at. That's probably what 16-ish, maybe. 
Okay, that's 21, so too much. I'm going to knock a little bit off. I really don't like knocking off coffee from my portafilter. It always kind of changes the way it could pull a little bit, but sometimes it is necessary. So I just do a small brush over the top. Man, I am really not. I'm aiming for 18 grams for this dose. 19. Yeah, I don't love that. Um, it would be a good reason to pick up a distri distribution tool. So can kind of solve some of the little divots I made there. I think I can make up for it with the pre-infusion, so we will see. Let me use their tamper here. Um, another thing that I like about their tampers is that the little metal part, it should be, or the black should be flush with your basket, and that's a good way to like learn how to tamp. Um, it's just going to be the right amount usually if you're filling the basket all the way. Perfect. All right, so I'll do the same thing here. Let it drip out. Um, and Breville actually provides a steaming pitcher with it, which is kind of nice, you know, uh, one less thing for you to pick up. Let's brew into the glass. And I'm just gonna hit the double button. So this will pull a little bit different. Did the best I could to make them equivalent. But since every machine pulls a little bit different, ideally you would have two different grinders. But try to keep it as, as similar as possible. Oh, let me steam. A little less steaming power here. It's not horrible, it's just a little bit slower. It's just, um, really it'll give you more time to texture your milk. And you saw the shot stop automatically. It displays the time here, 30 seconds. It does look like the output was a little bit bigger, but that makes sense for a bigger dose. This is also a little lever here instead of that knob, the turn knob. More of a preference than anything. There we go. I always steam till the pitcher is just too hot to touch. That's usually around 160 degrees. You know, I'm not perfect, but hey. Okay, a little bit of milk stuck here. If that does happen, I'd recommend just using a little bit of the hot water since this has a hot water feature on the side as well, just to wipe it off. Foam on this one looks pretty good. That's what you get with a slower steam. You can kind of be more precise. It doesn't all happen so fast. All right, Let's see what I can do here. More of a true rosetta there. Beautiful milk. Yeah, I tried to get about the same, and look, that's pretty pretty similar. Probably be a little bit stronger than the other one. That's delicious. So it is a little bit more intense. This shot was bigger, but I'm really happy about the foam quality and the way the shot came out. I think, you know, it's not bitter in any way, which for me is a real like turn off, I don't like bitter coffee at all. But yeah, there we have it. Oh, I did want to show you the hot water feature. So it's on the side there. Both of these machines do have like a little bit of a volume issue. I'd say they can be loud. The biggest part is when you use the hot water here. Let me see if I can recreate the sound. So that's what I mean. And that's just the boiler refilling. Yeah, so it takes a little bit. So that's the reason why I say it's not great to use a lot of hot water. It's gonna be really loud if you try to do it that way. Um, and then again, after you're done with it, it'll immediately start to heat. So you'll need to give it a second before you can pull more hot water. This is more of a really good machine if you're looking for a consistent 
um, espresso maker, <laughs> a consistent for your espresso, and then you like to make lattes like every once in a while, or you know, um, maybe you have like one person in your family who drinks lattes. So you can pull your shot first and then turn on the steam boiler. When you turn on the steam boiler, it does lose a little bit of that consistency because it's splitting the power. Um, you know, in Europe, this was really designed like with a 220 volt, so it doesn't have all that same power like the 110 volts versions we have here in the US will. But it's really not that big of a deal. You won't really notice probably, especially if you're using milk in your shot, but just something to note. This one doesn't have as much if issues with that heat. The sound is still there though, as you heard probably with the hot water. Something to note on both of these is the top. They both have a passive cup warmer, if you will. So all of the heat inside the machine are what lead to that being hot. <laughs> I would um, be careful when you put uh, cups on top of this one because of that loud um, um, pump filling. It does kind of shake a little bit. So sometimes your glass will rattle a little bit. Just something to note. Not as bad on this one, but really just a small little difference there. So yeah. There you have it, Breville Dual Boiler versus Ranchilio Silvia Pro. Let us know if you have any questions about the differences between these models. But until then, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. See you next time.